most of you doubtless will remember on September 1st past, George Foreman fought his first defense of his heavyweight championship against a fighter named Joe King Roman in Tokyo, Japan. And it wasn't much of a fight. It lasted for only two minutes of the first round. I think most of you perhaps more vividly recollect the brilliance of George Foreman back in January of this year on the island of Jamaica when he simply demolished Joe Frazier, a superb fighter himself, in the second round of their fight for the title. But there was of great interest in the Roman fight a controversy. As has been so often the case in heavyweight championship fights, there was a rhubarb, as my old friend Red Barber would have put it, that took place during the fight and immediately thereafter. An allegedly foul blow struck by the heavyweight champion George Foreman against Joe King Roman when Roman was on the canvas. So we're going to concentrate on that as we proceed to Martial Arts Hall in Tokyo, Japan, where the bout was actually held. 8,000 in attendance. Here will come the referee's instructions. That's the stadium or arena that I alluded to, Martial Arts Hall, with the crowd filing in. Actually, every top price seat at $189 was sold, though there were 7,000 empty seats. Now here's Jay Edson, the referee. 15 rounds, three knockdown rules waived. The mandatory eight count is in effect. If you deliver a knockdown blow, you must go to a neutral corner before I commence counting. Watch for the fouls because I'll take points away. Butting, pushing, hitting with the kidneys, all the fouls. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Did you see that movement by Roman? At the very least, he stuck his tongue out at Foreman, and Foreman later admitted to having been enraged by the gesture. Still, as they come out at the sound of the opening bell, watch Foreman closely, he's in the red trunks. You will not see him do much punching in the early seconds. He'll be dancing with Roman, who had been dancing with his throat through all of the pre-fight tub thumping. That's what I mean. But in just a matter of seconds now, watch Foreman's right. Roman's belly. It's just about ready to come up. You'll see Roman almost lifted off his feet. There it is. Roman staggered. Even if just for a second, and it may be that all starch went out of Roman's performance right there. Certainly, George moves quickly in, becomes aggressive in the manner that he was against Joe Frazier, and he manhandles Roman with ease. Now, get ready for the controversial punch. I want to emphasize that Jay Edson is in good position, the referee. There, he was down. And quickly, you saw a right landed to Roman's face while he was down. Roman's handlers come in to argue with Edson, who, by the way, is a member of the Arizona State Athletic Commission. Foreman placid in the neutral corner. Now the fight resumes. Of course, George is all over him, and that quick punishing right floors him for the second time. We are not two minutes into the first round. Mandatory eight count is registered. Roman comes back to do battle, but not really. He is against the ropes, Foreman swinging wildly and missing, but finally, final knockdown takes place. This time, Roman will not be getting up the official time, two minutes of the first round. Look at Roman's eyes, utterly glazed. Foreman with that impassive face. Now, Foreman's being acknowledged as the winner. Roman still cannot get up. His handlers are trying to help him, but there is still no disposition to rise. And so Foreman easily retains his title. We're going to be back in just a moment, and we're going to take a closer look at that controversial blow registered by Foreman in slow motion. Then we're going to hear referee Edson's explanation of the blow as he saw it, and finally, Ray Falk will be talking with the heavyweight champion himself, George Foreman. Back in a moment.
You're looking at a shaving system that won't shift or shimmy because the blade is locked in safe. With no exposed corners to nick you like a double edge can. The Schick injector system. It gives you a safe, easy riding shave around tough spots like ears, noses, and Adam's apples. The Schick injector system. It's locked in safe. Hello, boss. I got the facts from the park. 21 bike riders are wearing Converse Coach athletic shoes. 32 men and boys are playing basketball in coach shoes. 13 joggers, 14 pitnickers, 12 volleyball players, 6 kids on swings, all in Converse Coach. No one wearing our shoes. Huh? Me? I'm wearing Converse Coach. How could the guy resist them? For action and comfort, it's Coach by Converse. Before we move on to look at the Foreman controversial blow in slow motion, a quick reminder about next week's show. We'll have the conclusion of the World Swimming and Diving Championships from Belgrade, Yugoslavia. We'll have another outstanding sporting event, and we'll be taking a look one year later at the 20th Olympiad from Munich, West Germany. But right now, back to the Foreman-Roman fight, if it could be called that, and the notion occurs that perhaps Tokyo was not far away. They could have found a, a more distant place to have held it. Let's look at the slow motion of that blow. All right. We pick up the bout. Now watch Jay Edson, the referee, close. Position is everything in officiating a fight. And Jay Edson has it. He's off to the side there in a perfect spot. Slow motion makes the action seem much lengthier, of course. Roman is getting ready to go down on the canvas. That sent him down. Last blow. Now watch. He would appear clearly to be down. And there is the foreman blow that stirred the furor. Instantly, the handlers got up in the corner of Roman and they appealed to the referee immediately and their appeals were unavailing as you can see right there jay edson was adamant in his position about the blow as he later explained it was not a it was not a foul it was a follow through on a punch it can happen to any fighter in the momentum of coming through with a flurry of punches there was no intention i'm sure on his part he's a champion he doesn't have to resort to that type of fighting it was just a follow through as the man was going down. I did not count it as a knockdown. I pushed Mr. Foreman back to a neutral corner. I allowed eight to 10 seconds for Roman to stand up. I gave him a chance to get back his, his uh, uh, get back into motion. Uh, there was nothing illegal about what happened. It was just an unfortunate event as on a follow through on the punch of the champion, that's all. There can be no question that George Foreman is possessed of extraordinary punching power, but certainly he did not add to his championship luster by fighting the likes of Joe King Roman and beating him. He's going to have to fight the good ones, which is what Ray Falk talked to him about. Where are you headed from here? What next, what's next on your fighting schedule? Well, I'm hoping to jump on another contender within the next couple of months and uh... They go on down from Joe Frazier, Jerry Quarry, uh, Ali, Norton, and people of this nature. They've been offering, and I think there's a, slim, a great possibility that we'll be getting together sometime in the future with some contender. How do you rate the people you just mentioned? I think that they're all great fighters, and I'm fighting all contenders. I don't care what, how they're rated or whatever, I'll just fight them. Well, people are already beginning to compare you to Joe Lewis that you've got the determination and the fighting sense and uh, the power. How does that... That's the greatest compliment that could be paid to me or any other boxer is to have some kind of comparison to Joe Lewis. I think that if I ever do look good on a particular night, it will be because I had some resemblance to the style and grace of Joe Lewis as far as being dedicated to trying to knock out a guy. Well, that's George Foreman talking, and it's interesting that he mentions Ali and Norton, since those two will be fighting this Monday night in the Forum in Los Angeles, California. 
And that wraps up our wide world of sports show for today. Happy. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. From New York to Honolulu, United serves more cities in your land than any other airline. Today's program